What's up, y'all? It's your boy. I'm back. All right. So gave y'all a little bit of a break. I, I took a week off to focus on some other things in life. And as a result, the car suffered, which it always does. I wanted to kind of show you guys. So I started sanding these areas that had the damage from the wrinkling that I showed you in the other video. And this is a very light sanding. Um, I would say something like a 600 grit. And so I guess the theory here is with all the sanding to just kind of go back, hit it with the red paint, let it dry, and then hit it with the clear coat again. That way I don't have to repaint everything, just the, these areas here. Um, so I'm probably gonna do that right now, uh, or maybe a little bit after my uh, heater warms up in the garage, cause it is kind of cold in here. And then after that is done, I talked to my boy Diego and he helped me out, gave me some advice, like I said before, and he said, to use this stuff to take out any of the roughness in the clear coat. Um, he said you could do more advanced cuts and buffs, but he said if you're just trying to get quick results, that's fine, and sure enough, that's what I'm trying to get. So we're going to try an experiment on this side, on this part of the car, basically just spraying these parts with red so that you don't see any of the damage, and then going over these parts, these parts with the clear coat again, uh, this trunk, okay, this trunk will need to be redone almost completely. You can see there's a lot of wrinkling here that happened in the process. Uh, very frustrating. You know, it was, it, it was coming out really well and then that happened. But you can see when it's, if it comes out the way it's supposed to come out, like right here, very shiny, looks really good, like awesome. Um, so if I could just get it to do that for the rest of the car, I'd be very happy. Um, but I'm gonna warm up the garage a little bit first because doing any sort of painting without the garage being warm is sort of just like a death sentence. Um, today, while I'm in here, I could even go and I could clear coat this whole side because this actually came out okay. I just wanna make sure that the car is dry this time because uh, I think that's what caused the contamination. While I'm doing that, uh, I did drop the transmission. Um, I didn't show you guys this because again, just wanted to focus on the car, wanted to take a break from social media. Drop the transmission. And it's over here. What did I do with the transmission? Well, I put in a new final drive. The new final drive box is up there. Um, I was previously on a 4.7 final drive when I was racing against Lee and Ronnie. And you could see in a lot of my videos that I was really struggling to keep up. Um, so put in a 5.1. Uh, and then we have B16 gears in here now. I had GSR third and fourth. No bueno. Um, so now we got B16 gears in here with a magical fifth gear which is um, a very short ratio. It's from a 92 to 93 GSR, um, very difficult to find. So thank God Gear X made them. But I was waiting on these seals. So this, I was leaking um, transmission fluid out of these old seals. So this one is a, I believe it's an NTN seal, um, but it was leaking. So I got brand new SKF seals from Rock Auto. Um, but yeah, I mean the transmission shifts as it should, which is dope and uh, it spins and everything. So we basically have to just take this off. I'm gonna do one final inspection uh, with this off. And then I'm, after I do that final inspection uh, and the garage is a little warmer, I'm going to clean this off, lay down some RTV, and then I'm going to put it down. If you guys haven't yet, follow me on Instagram. Um, you probably have if you're on this channel, but on my Instagram, I did a, a, a reel where I put this transmission together. Um, kind of cool video if you want to see it. If, not, if that's cool, if not, I mean, you, whatever floats your boat, man. But so yeah, that's what we're doing now. Uh, I'm gonna take this off right now and just go over things one last time. I've ta I've had this apart several times, just double checking everything. That's what I do when I put these transmissions together, and then I'm going to slap it back together, and it should all be good. It's funny, I think you can tell <laughs> how badly this one was leaking just by all the crap <laughs> all around <laughs> all around this uh, this this thing right here. Uh, I don't know what this stuff is. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like RTV or if it's stuff from the dirt or the ground or it's metal shavings, but it's all over the place. And uh, it looks to be coming from here. I mean, that's what my brain is telling me, but I, my brain is also a small human brain. So I could be totally wrong. But the good news is, in theory, I have a seal that should replace this. If not, I'm gonna be mad. Okay, that looks right. That's good. So this is a new um, 
SKF seal. Um, it looks a little different than this one, but you can see this is all chewed up. So I'm thinking that that got messed up over time. So maybe I'll put this in a little further next time because this is kind of sitting right at the edge, but I'm gonna pop that out now. So to pop it out, I'm just gonna take a plier and just kind of pull on it. Should just come right out or not. Okay, give me a second here. I swear I know what I'm doing. Oh, all right. Well, it might have actually been leaking from uh, from inside of here. Um, it's damaged because I was moving the pliers on it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all that gray fluid looks from there. It looks like a, almost like diff material, which is wild because I change my fluid very frequently. So I'd be surprised if it was diff material. But I'm not taking that diff out. It's too late. I don't care. Y'all beat me at champs because my diff sucks. I don't care. I'm done. John is going back to gut away. It is. You kidding me? Okay. This seal was a little bit more difficult to get in than the other one. I can see why maybe it leaked before. Um, but it's looking pretty level. So what I do is I, I take the old seals and I save them. And then I take a dead blow. Um, on anything that's dry to dry. So like there's no fluid that should be going in between this crack. I typically don't use any lube. That was creepy. And I slide it in um, with a dead blow, very lightly, and an old seal. And I try to get it as flat as possible, just eyeballing it, nothing crazy. No tools, nothing like that. Um, one thing, so on these transmissions, uh, what I've been seeing a lot with these aftermarket throwout bearings is they are cracking. Um, so this throwout bearing is actually pretty, pretty bad, it's pretty loose. <laughs> it should be a lot tighter, so I'm probably gonna have to buy a new throwout bearing. Uh, probably buy an OEM one, because uh, they, they, this is, it's not bad, uh, but it's on its way out. And what I've been seeing a lot is these tabs here have been cracking. And what happens is it causes it to sort of like cock to the left or to the right when you're shifting the gear, when you're putting the clutch in, and it catches the clutch and you miss shift and then you over rev your engine or so Ken Martinez blew up an engine like that. Alex Herman actually discovered an issue like that. Um, so this, this is an old used bearing. So this one is gonna go in the trash um, because I'm not gonna take a chance at running that. I don't feel like dropping the trans again. Uh, looking at the clutch, um, let's go check out the clutch. So let's get one of these Amazon lights and check it out. Okay. <sighs> Um, okay, it's, well, let's see if I can fix this. Uh, no, it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good for the Amazon light. Uh, I love China. Okay, so that's garbage. Okay. Oh, that's shiny. All right, yeah. So here's the clutch. It looks like all the teeth are in good shape. Um, that's the pressure plate. If I wanted to, I could check and see if the springs are bad on this clutch. Um, I might do so, but right now I'm more focused on the trans. So while I'm putting the trans together, uh, I will think about that proposition. I really don't feel like doing more work, but the trans is dropped now. Uh, and the responsible thing to do would be to check it. So, I don't know. Holler at your boy in a couple seconds. He'll tell you what he thought and what he what conclusion he came to. But for now, we're going to pop this back open, get ready to put it back together for good now. Not just assemble to test, but for good. All right. Um, for those of you who have taken apart a transmission, who are familiar with this view. For those of you who haven't, welcome to madness. Um, it's really not that difficult once you figure it out. Um, assembling it can get difficult if you run into little issues here and there. But other than that, it's not too bad. This differential was out. I did clean it. I was originally going to pull it out again, clean it. I realized, hey, I already cleaned this. Why would I do that again? Everything was clean. The case was cleaned. It was all clean. So why would I do that again? Uh, I won't. Um, but um, I kind of wanted to show you guys. So I run used parts. I run a lot of used parts, okay? A lot of people knock me. They bust my chops. Uh, why are you running used parts? Why are you running eBay parts? Because they work. Um, 
for me at least, because so these are all OEM gears except for the fifth gear set because they're very hard to find this fifth gear set from a 92 to 93 GSR. So it's a gear X. This is an M factory final drive. <clears throat> I think this is an M factory differential. These gears, these are all OEM. This fourth gear and this third gear, these are from a B16. So you see, see these little house looking things, upside down house looking things up here, right side up house looking things right here. They're a little rough, all right? So they should be pointy. They should be shaped like houses, uh, a house in this sense, ready? Should be shaped like this. Let's see if we can get it to draw. It's kind of cold, so it should be shaped like that. And they're called dogs. Dogs, like bark. Um, <laughs> and they should be shaped like that. And they help this little slider engage to engage this gear to the rotating assembly, okay? When they're not sharp like that, it causes difficulty binding. So I have a fix for that. Instead of running new gears, buying new gears, spending money, what I do is I take jeweler's files. So these are just regular jeweler's files. They're called needle files from Hyper Tough Walmart brand. And you just grind the edges ever so slightly. I run them around the, the radius and then I run them linearly. Uh, and that basically helps clean up any of the, the burrs on those little dogs so that it'll shift better. Um, it's a quick fix. Uh, Steve Simmons, who used to race H2 with us, actually gave me that idea. He said, yeah, BMW has it in their service manuals. That's how they fix some of their transmissions. So I said, F it, why not? I'll try it. And I've been doing that in transmissions. I've opened up 10, 15 transmissions in my lifetime, and I've done it on every single one, and they've all worked. So if someone tells you not to use used parts, tell them to go horse themselves. All right, after cleaning it all off, I realized that uh, I don't think I have a gasket maker or RTV. Um, yeah, normally I have like, uh, you know, normally I use gray RTV to put this stuff back together because I don't have Honda Bond usually. Uh, I don't think I even have a gray gasket maker. I, think I ran out of everything, which sucks because I don't think I can put the transmission back together <laughs> without that. So, um, unless I can find that, which I doubt, I mean, let's check in here. I'll take you guys on a little adventure. Uh, so we got used JB Weld. It's wonderful. You got a trailer bearing. Uh, yeah, it looks like we are, we are, um, effed here. Okay. That's annoying. All right. So we don't have that. Um, so I'm going to have to order that. Um, but I, I cleaned off all these mating surfaces and the idea was to basically RTV and assemble. Um, so for now, I suppose we're going to have to get started on sanding the rest of this car. Um, now that it's nice and warm in here, I might actually go ahead and, um, I might actually go ahead and clear coat this side, uh, just to see how it comes out now that it's a little bit warmer in here. Uh, that will give me an idea of how good the car is, and at least I'll have one side looking good, and I can be excited about that, um, or not, because also the clear coat's expensive, and I would rather have a whole car that I can clear coat at once. Um, I think I might just actually start sanding it first. So I guess we have to start sanding here. I'll get the trout, my new sander. Not really super excited about that, but it is what it is, so. All right, let's get to work. All right, first impression of this Harbor Freight sander, Wow, I don't know why I've been doing it with a sanding block. <laughs> That's my first impression. Um, that makes things way easier. Wow, I'm a dumbass. Uh, but it's okay. I kind of knew that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oops. So we got these 5-inch sanding discs. I started with the 6-inch, six 600 grit over here just to see kind of what it would do. Started out real nice, of course, and then it kind of lost its grittiness and stopped doing stuff. So, um, that was kind of expected. Um, what I need to do is I need to pull this bumper, uh, and then begin stripping all the paint off, uh, here. Uh, I'm probably going to throw the OEM hood back on the one over there, and then I'm going to, you know, rough that up. Um, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the 300 grit or whatever it is first, 
and then I'm going to use the 600 grit because or 220 grit because this 220 grit seems to be probably what I'm going to need. Um, so I'm just going to open it up. Um, I got this sander for I think 30 bucks. Um, you know, they put like a bunch of nines on everything because like psychologically it's supposed to entice you to buy things. It was like 29.99 or something, but yeah, I think it was 30 bucks um, without tax. And um, so yeah, basically we're gonna you know throw this on here and hopefully it'll suck up all the fumes from the sanding and yeah all right i gotta put this phone down though man okay i know it looks like a mess it always does but that sander makes quick work of stuff man so this is all done with 200 grit watch is nice and red that's done with 600 grit so that means that we not only got uh so that means that we not only got done sanding that bumper with 200 grit but 600 grit at the same time so now now that the garage is a little bit warm we've uh what we're gonna do is um i need to take these goggles off yeah and it's not even like like before when i would sand in here it was so it was so like dusty in here because i didn't have a vacuum on the sander um but now uh it's so much nicer in here, you know, like, like uh, it sucks up all of the, the dust. So that's awesome, man. Um, let me see. So I guess I could take the risk and paint that rear bumper white. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm not going to do that. I think I'm going to let it sit. Um, and the reason I'm going to let it sit oops, is because I don't want to take the chance that any of the dust that I just kicked up is going to get in the base coat uh, the, of the um, the primer. So this, um, so basically, this whole side is sanded in six is two hundred grit. That's ready to paint. It's all masked up. Um, I removed the front bumper, and then uh, this side still needs to be sanded. So this fender and this door needs to be sanded. That's all ready to paint. This this is the only side of the car that didn't get messed up when I did the clear coat. So we're gonna paint this. Um, yeah, we have to basically um, figure out what we're going to do with this ugly screw. Um, but yeah, so that's, we're just going to sand this down. It's going to be another 200 grit sand. And that sander has saved my life. This has made so much, my work so much easier. Um, I did sand through the tape here, which kind of pisses me off, like right here. Um, so that means that my door handle is not nice and shiny black plastic like it should be from the factory, which really bothers me, but it is what it is. Again, it's a race car. So, um, transmission's ready to go together. Uh, I did overnight some stuff from Amazon. Um, so Amazon should be sending me some, some, uh, gray RTV and that should help me put the transmission together then I can put the transmission in while I'm not painting and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the goal. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to freight train this stuff because I did take a week off to recollect myself and focus on my life. Um, and that took some time away from the car, obviously. So, but yeah, this sander is great, man. Um, it is definitely making a nice finish. Um, this is all cleaned and ready to paint essentially. Um, I might actually just go and give it a paint. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Uh, it doesn't look too bad in here. And then I'll, I guess I'll give you an update on what it looks like when I'm done with the white. And then I'm going to close the camera and hang out with my friends. We're going to watch the Sixers game. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I mean, it, it came out good. It is uh, definitely, definitely powdery in here. Definitely dusty in here. I'm covered in dust. But, um you know, most of it is because of the aerosol, which is great for my lungs, I'm sure. I'm joking, it's terrible for my lungs. Um, but you can see the primer is down on the bumper. Um, didn't really care if I got overspray on this side because it got a bunch of wrinkles in it anyway. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let this dry and then after it dries, yeah, see, look at that, that's annoying. Um, after it dries, I will be able to spray a base coat on it. Um, Oh, shizzle. I forgot to mask the rest of this. Oh, that's really annoying. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> that means that I need to go and wipe this off with some brake clean, but that's fine. It's fine. We'll do that right now. And um, yeah, then I'll end the video.
All right, well, much like my uh, RTV, I also ran out of brake clean, so cleaned off a little bit of the overspray. Um, and then, um, yeah, I quickly realized that I don't have any more brake clean either. So uh, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> uh, I'm basically going to, um, you know, tape over the rest of this, probably just continue painting this. And then when it's done painted, uh, the 2K clear coat has an epoxy component, so it will not be able to be removed with brake clean. So then when that's done, I will pull this tape off, take brake clean, spray it off, and then the 2K clear epoxy will not be affected by it because it's super baller stuff. Um, chemically, it just does not come off because it has a hardener in it. Anyway, uh, science. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it for now. So we're going to call it a wrap for tonight. I'm um, going to go take a shower. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.